Hi, I'm Ms. Pat, Education Associate at the Customs House Museum and Cultural Center. And today, we're going to build an edible log cabin. We're going to be using pretzel rods, graham crackers, and chocolate frosting. We're going to start by building our base on a cardboard plate. A uh, ceramic type of plate probably won't work as well because it won't stick very well. We're going to take a generous amount of chocolate frosting and smooth it onto the bottom portions of the pretzels. We're going to stick that down on the plate. Then just like the log cabin that we have in the museum, we're going to start to alternate the tree trunks, or in this case, the pretzel logs, as we build up our walls. We're going to use the chocolate frosting at the corners to be like a glue to hold it together. This is an authentic log cabin that we have on display at the Customs House Museum. This is what you think of when you think of what kind of houses did the pioneer and early settlers live in when they moved out west. I want to talk a little bit about how it was put together. The first thing they had to do was to clear the land of any trees that were already there. And then they had to cut down trees first things they had to do when they got the logs back to the home site was to trim them and to hew them. It's called hewn. To use an axe to strip off the bark. You can feel it. When you come to the museum, you can use your hands and you can actually feel the marks that the axe. Then just like with a real log cabin, we're just going to keep alternating back and forth as we build up our walls. They would lay the logs horizontally, going this way and that way. And they would intersect at the corner. They didn't even need nails to build the long cabin because they carved in notches at the ends of the logs and look how nicely they fit together. Press down gently, not too hard. You don't want to break the pretzel. Now notice in between the logs, we have a space. We have a gap. They filled in that gap with something called daubing or chinking. That's where they would mix mud or clay with straw, twigs, even corn cobs and rocks. And they would slather that in between the logs to help insulate the cabin and keep it warm. It's interesting here. Now, as we build up our walls, we are going to take a lot of chocolate frosting and smooth it on the inside of the walls. This is like the daubing that they did in log cabins, like the log cabin we have at the museum. As we're doing this, it's pushing the frosting 
through the logs, filling in those spaces, just like the real log cabin. The inside of this log cabin is typical of a frontier log cabin. It's basically one room. The whole family would live in this one room. It has a loft for sleeping. It has a stone fireplace. All log cabins had that. And that was for warmth and also a place for cooking. It was common for log cabins to have a few windows. However, back in the old days, a lot of settlers didn't have glass, so they would use greased paper as their window. I'm going to spread some more chocolate frosting inside where it needs more daubing. Now, can you imagine what it would be like as a whole family to grow up in basically one room with no indoor plumbing, no electricity, how would you get by? Let's start with their source of light. No electricity, you can't turn the lights on. Let's look around and see if we can find some sources of light. Well, of course, the windows provided light, and then they used candles. We see some candles there that have been dipped that are hanging from the ceiling. This is a candle mold that would have been used to make candles. Now I'm ready to install the roof. We're going to use four pretzel rods for the roof. And we're going to form them as a triangle in the log cabin using the chocolate frosting as a glue. Let's say you want some butter on your bread. Well, you can't just run to the store and get some butter. You'd have to make your own. Over there, that barrel-looking thing with a stick in it, that's a butter churn. You'd have to use the milk from your cows and make your own butter. Now the next thing we're going to do is take another pretzel rod and put it on top of the triangle. Once again, using the chocolate frosting as a glue. I want to make sure that you have plenty of chocolate frosting on the part of the roof structure that's down in the cabin to help hold those triangles together. Next thing we're going to do is put the roof on using graham crackers and once again being very generous with the chocolate frosting as glue. You can't run to the mall and buy your clothes so you'd have a loom. Perhaps you'd have some sheep and you'd get wool from the sheep and you would make your own fabric. No indoor plumbing, but it's the middle of the night, it's raining, it's cold, you don't wanna to go to the outhouse. So, every log cabin would have a chamber pot. This is the original log cabin that the Powers family lived in. It's not a reconstruction. It was moved to the museum in 1986 and they put it back together, log by log. Interesting to note, when you come to the museum and have a look for yourself, the Powers, Barnabas and Susanna's youngest son, Elijah Wilson Powers, carved his initials on the outside of the cabin. It'll be kind of fun when you come by. See if you can find them. Okay, this last part of the roof here, is going to overlap the other parts of the roof. So I'm going to put some of our chocolate frosting glue down that side too. I'm 
that's our edible log cabin. You're going to want to give it some time for the frosting to set, for it to dry. It's still very fragile at this point. You may have to repress some of the areas, straighten out a few of the areas. Basically, it's fun to do. It's pretty simple. And it's going to be really fun to eat. Thank you.